In this chapter, we're going to show sketch-based features. Sketch-based features we can find in the Part Design Workbench. Those features are used to create basic and simple parts, and they require a simple sketch. So let's go here to the start, Mechanical Design, let's go to the Part Design Workbench. Let's go with Part 1 name and OK. Before we use sketch-based features, we have to create a sketch. We can create a sketch on those planes. This one here, this one here, or this one here. So let's select this plane here, or you can select the plane here, X, Y plane. And now let's go here and let's create a sketch. So let's select here rectangle. Let's start here at the origin. Let's create rectangle like this. Now you can see this angle is not fully defined. So we can go here and you can select here auto constraint. You can select all of those lines here and let's go with OK. And now this sketch is fully defined. Dimensions for now are not important. Now if we want to use this sketch to create a 3D model, we have to go here, exit workbench. Like this. And now we're going to show how to use a tool pad. Pad is the process of taking a two-dimensional profile as we have here and converting it into 3D feature by giving it some thickness. So let's go here to the sketch based features toolbar. If you don't see this toolbar, you can right click here and you can find here this toolbar. So the first tool that we have here is pad. Let's select this tool like this. Now make sure that here on a profile surface, this sketch is selected. And now here we can see the process of creating a 3D model. Here we have the first limit, type dimension. So we can put here the length. Now we have by the default 20, but we can increase this. We can go for example to 40 and we can hit tap like this. As well here we have reverse direction. Now we have in this direction, as you can see the arrow here, but we can go to the opposite direction. So we can click here, reverse direction, and now we go in this direction, like this. As well, here we have an option, mirrored extent. We can check this one, and now we have in both direction, the same value, 40 millimeters. But we don't want this now, so let's uncheck this, and let's go here with reverse direction. Here we have option preview, so we can click here, and now we can see the preview. And now if we are satisfied with this, we can go and click OK. And this is our model that we have created. So we project two-dimensional profile to 3D feature. And if we go here to our specification tree, we can open part body, and here we can see the pad 1. Pad 1 consists of sketch 1. If we want to change some properties here on the pad 1, we can double click here, and now we can change here, for example, we can go with a length 50, and let's go with preview, let's go with OK. If you want to change something in the sketch, you can double click here in the sketch, like this. And now, for example, we can change this dimension, Let's go with 200 and hit enter, like this. And now let's go here, exit workbench. And we can see that those changes has been applied here as well. Now as we shown, we can create a sketch on those three standard planes, but as well, we can create a sketch on those faces of this 3D model. For example, we can create a sketch on this face here. So we can select this face and you can go here, sketch. And now, for example, we can select here circle, and we can create here a circle, like this. Now we won't put any dimensions here, so we can go here exit workbench. Let's go here to the pad. And here we have a length 50 millimeters. We can change this, for example, we can go with 25. Let's go with tab, like this, and let's go with preview. Let's click OK. Now if we want to delete the pad, in sketch 2, you can right click here and you can go here with delete. Let's go with OK. And now we have only this body. Now let's go here to the pad, let's double click on the pad. Here we can see we have a first limit. We can click here on the more and now here we have a second limit. So here we have a first limit in one direction, 50 millimeters length, and here we can define the second limit in the other direction, in this direction here, down. So we can go here for example with 25. Let's go with tab, like this, and now here we can see we have 25 in this direction. Let's go with preview, like this. Remember, if you check your mirrored extent, then in both directions you have the same value, but here for the first and second limit, you can put a different length. Let's go with OK. And this is it. This is a simple way how you can create a 3D model.
Now we're gonna look at some advanced techniques of the path tool. So here we have this 3D model, and now we're gonna create a sketch on this face here. So let's select this face, and let's go here to the sketch. Like this, let's select your rectangle, and let's create here some random rectangle, like this. Let's exit the workbench. And now let's select here toolpad. Now first we have to select your profile surface, so we can select this rectangle. If you select rectangle before you open a pad tool, then you don't have to select your profile surface selection. Now here for the first limit type, we have dimension. But we can click here, and here we have some other options. We have a up to next. Let's select this one here. The up to next option extrudes the sketch through the face next to the sketch plane. So let's go here to the reverse direction, and let's go with preview. And now we can see that nothing happens. Why is that? Because this sketch goes to this face here, as we can see. This one here, and there is no difference if you make extrude with this sketch or not. Now let's cancel this. Now let's create a sketch on this face here. This one here. Let's select this face, and let's go here to the sketch. Like this. Let's select your rectangle. Let's create here a rectangle with random dimensions, like this. Let's exit the workbench. Now you can see that this rectangle is selected. Now we can go to the pad here, and here on the profile surface we have a sketch tree, this one here, that is selected. Let's cancel this. Now let's click here, like this, and now we can see that our rectangle is white. Now let's go here to the pad, and now we can see that our profile is not selected. Now we have to select our profile. So let's select this rectangle, like this. So in the previous lecture, we've shown how we can work here with type, first limit, dimension. Now here we have some other options. We can click here, and here we have up to next, like this. Now we can see that our extrusion goes up to the next sketch plane, this one here. We can go here with a preview, and we can see the result. As well, here we have an option offset. So let's type here, 15 and let's go with that. Let's click here preview. And now we can see that here we have an offset from this face here to this direction 15 millimeters. If you don't want an offset, we can go here with zero and let's go with tap. Like this. Let's go with preview. So this is the option up to next. Let's click here. Here we have an option up to last. Like this. Let's go here with preview. Up to last option, extrude the sketch throughout the 3D geometry. Now you can see that this sketch goes here to all of this geometry. As well, here we have also option offset. So we can define an offset here. We can go with 20, hit tap, let's go with preview. And now here we can see our offset. The next option that we have here is up to plane. The up to plane option extrude the sketch from the sketch plane up to a selected planar face. So here we have to select the limit planner face. So let's select this face here, like this. Let's go with preview. Now we can see that the extrusion of this sketch goes up to this face. Let's go here with the offset zero. Let's go with tap, like this. Let's go with preview. Now we can see that the extrusion goes up to this face. We can click here, the limit. We can select this face here. And let's go with preview. And now our extrusion goes up to this face here, as you can see. And the last option that we have here is up to surface. The up to surface option extrudes the sketch up to a selected surface. So here we can select the surface. Let's select this surface here. Like this, let's go with preview. And now here we have the extrusion up to this surface. As well here we can go with offset. Now for example, we can go here up to the plane. We can select this face. Let's go with preview. Now we can see the result. Now we can go here in the more now we can select the second limit. Let's go with dimension. Let's go with 50. Let's go with depth. And now here in other direction, we have extrusion with 50 millimeters. We can go with preview and OK. And this is our extrusion. Now let's show another option that we have with a pet tool. So let's go here to the part body. Let's double click here on the pet tool. Like this. Let's go here with the second limit length, 0. Let's hit step like this. Let's go here with dimension. Let's go 150. Let's go to the reverse direction like this. Let's go with preview. 
like this. Now we can see that the extrusion direction is normal to the profile. As we can see here, direction normal to profile is checked. But we can change this, we can change the extrusion direction. So we can check here, and now here we can select the reference. Let's select this edge here. Like this, let's go with preview. And now we can see the direction of the extrusion is along this edge here, as we can see here. So this is one option. We can also create some line, and then we can use this line as a reference of the extrusion direction. Let's click OK now. And this is our result. So those are some advanced options that you have with PET tool. In the previous lecture, we showed how we can use a tool pad. With toolpad, we can add material by converting a two-dimensional profile to 3D feature. Now we're going to show a tool pocket. With tool pocket, we can remove material from the geometry by extruding a sketch. So first, let's create a new 3D model. So let's go to this plane, X, Y, and let's go to the sketch. Let's go here to the rectangle. Let's start here at the origin. Let's create a rectangle with random dimensions. Let's go here to the auto constraint. Let's select this rectangle. Let's click OK here. Let's exit workbench. Like this. Let's go to the pad here. And let's go here with 50. And let's go with OK. And this is our 3D model. Now we're going to create a new sketch here on this face. So let's go to this face here. And let's go and let's create a sketch. Let's select here this circle. Let's create a circle here at any position with some random radius. Now let's exit the workbench, like this. And now we're gonna cut material with this circle. So we're gonna use this tool, Pocket. Here we can define the first limit dimension. So we can go with depth 50 millimeters. We can go with the preview. And this is our result, as we can see. We can change here the depth. We can go, for example, 20, like this. Let's go with depth. Let's go with preview. And now we got this result. We can also go here reverse directions, but we don't have anything to cut in other direction. Now here we have an option reverse side. So what it means? Let's click this and let's see what we're going to get. And let's go with preview. Now we can see that this portion of the dream model has been saved and the rest of the material has been cut. Now let's go here with depth 50. Let's go with depth. Let's go with preview. Now we got cylinder. Now we check here reverse. Let's go with preview. Now we got this. So as you can see, you can cut material inside of this circle and you can cut material outside of this circle by clicking here reverse side. Like this or like this. So those are the basics, how we can use a tool pocket. Now we're going to show the tool pocket. With the pocket tool, we can remove material from the geometry by extruding a sketch. So here we have the 3D geometry, and now let's create a sketch on this face here. So let's select this face, let's go here to the sketch. Let's go here to the circle, and let's create here a circle with some random dimensions, like this. Let's exit the workbench. And now we're going to use this sketch to cut our 3D geometry. So let's go here to the tool pocket. So here we also have the first limit, and if we go here with more, here we have the second limit. The type, we have dimension by the default. We also have here the same options as with the pad. Up to next, up to last, up to plane, up to surface. But first, let's go here with dimension. Here we have to select the profile and surface. So let's select this circle, like this. And here we can see the preview. We can click here on the preview, and let's click OK. So this is our result. Now here we have the two cuts, one here and one here. Now let's go here to the part body. Let's go to the pocket one. Let's double click here. Now let's select here option up to next. So with those limit options, we can define the start and end of the pet and pocket features. So let's go here. Let's go with up to next. Like this, let's go with preview. And now here we have the extrusion up to the next phase. And this is this phase. That's why here we have only this hole. The next option that we have here is up to last. Let's go with preview and we go to the last phase that we have here and this is this phase, this surface here. And now here we have four holes as we can see. Let's go here with up to plane. So now we have to select here a plane. Let's select this plane here. Let's go with preview. 
and now we have only one hole here because we have extrusion up to this face but here we also have an offset so we can go here for example with 20 let's hit tab and let's go with preview and now here we have two holes as we can see and the next option that we have here is up to surface so we can select this surface here like this let's first go with offset zero let's hit tab let's go with preview and now we have only three holes because this extrusion goes only to this surface here but if we go here with offset we can go for example with 20 hit tab preview and now here also we have a hole you can also go here to the more and here we can define the second limit if we would have material on the other side here then we will be able to cut material in both directions as well here we can go with reverse directions but there is nothing to cut here so let's go here reverse direction to this direction as well here we have an option direction now we have normal to profile we can also select here some edge or we can select some line as we shown in the previous lecture let's go here with zero hit tab and let's go with ok and this is our result now let's go here to this face let's create a new sketch let's go here to the circle let's create a circle here like this with random dimensions let's exit the workbench like this let's go here to the pocket here for the first limit let's go up to the surface let's select this surface here like this let's go with preview now we can see the preview and now let's go here to the more and let's go here to the second limit let's go here up to the plane let's select this plane here let's go with the preview let's click ok and now we got this result so this is how you can use a pocket tool by defining two limits the first limit in one direction and the second limit in the second direction now we're going to show the tick option in the pad and pocket tools with tick option we can add a thickness to selected sketch so let's go here to this plane here and let's create a new sketch let's go here let's select rectangle let's start here at the origin like this let's go here to the auto constraint let's select this rectangle let's go with ok now let's exit the workbench now we're going to extrude this rectangle so let's go here to the pad for the mesh and we're going to go with the default 20 let's go with ok now let's go to this face let's create here a new sketch this one here let's go to the sketch now let's select the rectangle again let's create here a new rectangle with some random dimensions like this let's exit the workbench now let's go here to the pad again now here we have a tick option we can check this one here and now here on the right side we have a thin pad thickness 1 and thickness 2 so here we have a length 20 millimeters but now we can go here with the thickness now we can increase the thickness and now you can see the changes in direction one and we can go in other direction like this so let's go with four and three let's go with okay and now we got this now you can see here we have a hole because we have defined the thickness here so this is also one option that you can use with a pad tool now let's go here to the part body let's go to the sketch too now you can see this is closed sketch now let's select this line let's delete this line like this and let's delete this line here now let's exit the workbench now you can see we got this result this looks like a wall so we can also use a thickness tool on the open sketch as we have here now let's go here undo like this let's go to the pad 2 right click and let's go here with delete let's go with ok like this now we're going to show how we can use a tick option here in the pocket so let's go in this space and let's create a new sketch like this let's go here with rectangle with random dimensions like this let's exit the workbench now let's go here to the pocket here also we have a tick option so let's check this one here tick you can also here go in two directions thickness one and thickness two so let's go here with two and two like this let's go with ok the depth is 20 millimeters default and let's click ok and now we got this result as you can see 
you can also go here to the pocket again and you can change here the depth we can go with 10 let's go with okay and now we got this result we can also go with open sketch for example we can go here to the sketch tree let's double click here let's delete this line here for example and let's exit the workbench and now we got this result so this is how you can use a tick option in the tool pad and pocket The next tools that we're going to cover are multi-pad and multi-pocket tools. The multi-pad tool takes a sketch with internal loops and adds multiple thickness to it. And the multi-pocket tool uses a multi-loop sketch to remove material with multiple depths. Let's show how this works. So first let's go to this plane, X, Y. Let's create a new sketch. Let's create a rectangle like this. And let's go here to the outer constraint let's select here let's go with okay now let's exit the workbench let's go to the pet let's leave everything as it is let's go with okay like this now let's go to this face let's create a new sketch let's create here some rectangle with random dimensions like this let's create here a circle with random radius like this let's create here another circle like this and now let's exit the workbench now here we have a three loops, the first one, the second one, and the third one. And now we can extrude those sketches with different thickness. To do that, we have to use a multi-pad tool. So let's click on this arrow here, and let's go here to the multi pad tool. Now here we have the domains and the thickness. Domain 1, 2, and 3. Let's click here. Now we can see this one here is blue. And now here we can define the thickness for only this loop. So we can go here and... We can go for example with 20 like this now we can select here the second domain this one here now we can see this one here is highlighted now we can define the thickness for this one so let's go here for this one for example 10 like this and let's select here the third domain let's go here with the length let's go to the 25 like this now let's go here to the preview and now we can see that those three sketches, closed sketches, have a different length. We can also go here to the motor and we can define the second limit. So let's go here with the domain tree. Let's define the length here. Let's go with 50. Let's go with tab, like this. Let's go with preview. Now we can see that in the reverse direction we have this extrusion. We can also select your domain 2 and now we can define here the second limit. So let's go here with 100, let's go with tab. Let's go with preview, like this. We can go to the main one, and let's go here with 60. Let's hit tab, like this. Let's go with preview, and this is our result. We can also here define direction. Now we have normal to sketch. We can select here some edge or some line if we want a different direction. Let's click OK now. And this is our result. So with multi-pad tool, you can define the different thickness for different loops in the same sketch. The same thing we can do with the multi-pocket tool, but instead of adding material, we're gonna cut material. So let's go here with undo, like this. Now let's click on this arrow here, and let's go here to the multi-pocket tool. So first we have to select our sketch. Let's select this sketch, like this. And here we have the multi-pocket definition dialog box. Here we have the same options as with multi-pad tool. So first, let's go to the domain one. Let's define here five millimeters. Let's go with tab like this. Let's go to domain two. Let's define here 10. Let's go with tab. And let's go here to domain three. Let's define here the depth. Let's go with two and hit tab. Let's go with preview like this. We can also go here to the second limit, but we don't have any material to cut in the second direction. So let's go with OK. And this is our result. Now we can see that here we have a different depths. This one here, this one here, and this one here. So this is how we can use a tools multi-pad and multi-pocket. Now we're going to show tools shaft and groove. Here we have tool shaft, and here we have a tool groove. With shaft tool, we can take a two-dimensional profile and revolve it about a center line to create a 3D geometry. 
and with the groove tool we can remove material from the geometry by revolving a sketch about an axis. So let's show how this works. Let's go here to this plane, YZ plane and let's create a new sketch. First let's go here and let's select your axis. Let's start here at the origin, like this, and let's create here a vertical axis because we're gonna revolve or sketch about this axis. Now let's select your profile. Let's start here. Let's go up. Let's go here with the horizontal line to the left. Let's go with the vertical line. Let's go here with the horizontal like this. Let's go with the vertical. Horizontal. Let's go here with vertical. Horizontal again, vertical. Like this, and let's finish here. Dimensions are not important. But let's go here to the auto constraint. Let's select those lines. Let's click OK here. Like this. Now you can select here constraint. Let's click here in the origin and at this point here. Like this. And now our sketch is fully defined. Now let's exit the workbench. Like this. Let's go here and let's select the tool shaft. And here we can see the preview. So now we revolve our sketch around this axis here. So here we have our limits, first angle, second angle. Now we have a first angle 360. Let's go here to the preview. So this is the result. Here we have the profile surface, this is sketch one, and here we have an axis, and this is sketch axis that we have created. Now let's cancel this, and now we can see that our sketch is selected. Now let's click here, now let's go here to the shaft, and now we have to select here our profile, let's select this profile, and let's go with preview. And this is the result. Now let's go here with the first angle. Let's go with 150. Let's hit tap. Let's go here with the second angle. Let's go with 100. Let's hit tap. Let's go with preview. And now we got this result. Now in one direction we have 150 degrees. And the second direction we have 100 degrees. Now for example we can go with second angle 0. Let's hit tap. Let's go with preview. Like this. Here we have option reverse direction and let's go with preview, now we got this result. But let's go here with reverse direction again and preview. Let's check here tick profile, here we also have an option of the thin shaft, thickness 1 and thickness 2. Now we can increase the thickness 1, we can see the changes here and we can increase the thickness 2 to the outside like this, now we can see the changes, let's go with preview and let's click OK. And this is our result. So this is how we can use here shaft tool. Now let's go here to the part body. Let's double click on the shaft. Let's go here to the thin profile. Let's uncheck this. Let's go here with 360. Let's click OK. Like this. And now we're going to show tool groove. So with groove tool we can remove material from the geometry by revolving a sketch about an axis. So first we have to create a sketch. So let's go here to this plane. YZ plane, let's create a new sketch. Like this. Let's select here a circle, and let's create a circle like this, with some random radius. And let's exit the workbench, like this. Now let's go here to the groove. Now here we have the profile surface sketch, this one here, but here we have to select an axis. So let's go with the mouse to this 3D model and here we can see an axis, so let's click here, like this. And now let's go here to the preview and here we can see the preview. This is our result, so we are removing material around this axis. Let's go with OK, as you can see now. Let's go here to the groove again, double click. We can also go here with the first angle, second angle, we can go for example here with 100 and let's go here with 100. Let's go with step. And now this is our result, let's go with preview, and this looks like this. Now here we have an option reverse side. Let's go here with reverse side, let's go with preview. And now we got this result. Now we can see that this one here, material is saved, and the rest of material is cut. We can click OK, and now we got this result. Let's go to the groove again, double click. Let's go here reverse side again. Like this, let's go with preview. Like this. Here we have also option tick profile, let's check this one here. Here we can go with thickness 1 and thickness 2. Let's go with 1 millimeter and 1 millimeter, like this. 
let's go with preview and let's go with OK. And now this is our result, as you can see. So those are all options, how you can use the tool Shaft and Groove. The next tool that we're going to show is Hole, this one here. So with this tool, you can drill a holes of the standard sizes. This tool has many predefined hole types. You only have to select the correct hole type and size, and you will create a 2D drawing that will automatically place the correct hole annotation. So first, let's create a 3D model. Let's go on the XY plane. Let's create a sketch. Let's select your center rectangle. Let's go here at the origin. Let's go with rectangle random dimensions, like this. Let's go to the auto constraint. Let's select here, and let's go with OK. Now let's exit the workbench, and let's go with a pet. Let's go here with 100 and hit enter, like this. Now let's select here tool hole. Now nothing happens because we have to select a face or plane. So let's select this face here. Because on this face we want to create a hole and here we can see the preview. Here we have three tabs, extension, type and thread definition. Let's go here to the type. Here by default we have a type simple. We can click here and here we can see the different types. Let's go first with simple. Here we have the extension. So we can go with blind, up to next, up to last, up to plane, up to surface. Those are the same options that we have here with a pad and bucket. So let's go with a blind. Here we have a diameter, 10 millimeters, and here we can change the depth. So let's go here with 20. And here we can select the direction, but by default we have normal to surface. We can uncheck this and you can select any edge or a line. So let's go with normal to surface. And here we can position our sketch. So let's go here. Let's click on this one, like this. And now we can click on this point and you can position this point anywhere where we want. For example, here. As well, we can add your dimensions. So we can go here to the constraint. We can select this point, this edge here, like this. And you can go here, for example, with 30 and hit enter, like this. Let's add a second dimension. Let's select this point and this edge here, like this. Double click. Let's go with 20, hit enter, like this. Let's exit the workbench, like this. And now this is our position of the hole. Here we have a bottom, but if all we have a flat, we can go with V bottom. Here we can see the preview. Now we have a V bottom with angle 120 degrees. We can change this, for example, to 150. Let's go with step, like this. Here we can go and we can click a preview. And this is our preview of our hole, as we can see. Here on the thread definition, we can add a thread. We can check this one here. We can go with a type. Your dimension, support, depth, up to plane. Let's go with dimension and thread definition. Type, no standard. We can change here to metric thin pitch and metric thick pitch. Here we have thread diameter, hold diameter, thread depth, hold depth and pitch. And we can go right threaded and left threaded. Like this. Let's click OK now. And this is our hole that we have created. So this is some standard hole. Let's go here to the hole again. Now let's select this face here. Like this, we can see the preview. Let's go here to the type. Let's select here tapered. Tapered hole is the process of decreasing the hole diameter toward the end, as we can see here on the preview. Here we have an angle 90 degrees. We can go, for example, with 100. Let's go with tap. And here we have other dimension that we can change here, diameter, depth, and so on, and thread definition. Let's go with preview. Like this, let's click OK. Now here we can see the result. Maybe we should change the position. So we can go here. And we can go here to the hole 2. Like this. Let's go to the extension. Let's go to the position in sketch. Like this. And you can move this one here. Like this. Let's exit the workbench. And let's go with preview. And let's go with OK. And this is our hole. Let's go to the hole again. Let's select this face here. Let's go here to the type. The next type that we have here is contour board. Contour board hole is a large diameter hole added at opening of another hole. Let's select this one here. And here we can see the preview. 
Let's go with preview and OK. And this is our counterboard hole. Let's go to the hole again. Let's select this face. Let's go to the type and the next type that we have here countersunk. Countersunk hole has an enlarged V shape, as we can see here, opening to accommodate a fastener below the level of workpiece surface. Let's go with the preview and OK. And this is our countersunk hole. And the last hole that we have here, the last type of the hole, let's go to the type, is counter drilled. Here we can change the diameter, depth, and the angle. As you can see the preview here, let's go with the preview and OK. And this is our hole. So those are some standard holes that you can use in Katia. You can add thread if you want, you can change dimension, depth, angle, and the position. Now we're going to show how to work with rip feature and slot feature. The rip feature is composed of two items, a cross section and pad. The cross section controls the shape of the rip while the pad controls its direction. So let's show how this works. Let's go here to the XY plane. Let's create a new sketch. Let's go here to the circle and let's create a circle. Like this, with some random diameter. We can go here and let's put dimension like this. Let's exit the sketch like this. Now let's go here to the YZ plane. Let's create a new sketch. And now we're going to create a line that's going to be our pad for this sketch here, for this circle. So let's go here to the line and let's go here to the origin. And let's create a line with some angle here, like this. Now let's exit the sketch. Now here we have a cross section, this circle, and we have a pad. And now we're going to sweep this circle along this pad here. And for that, we're going to use a tool rip. So let's select here tool rip. So first we have to select the profile and the profile is this circle. Now we have to select the center curve. The center curve is this line here. So let's select this line like this. And let's go here with preview like this. And this is our result. Now the exact same result we can get with a tool pad. So let's show this. Let's cancel this. Let's go here to the pad. Let's select here the profile, this circle, like this. Let's go here to the more, and here we have direction. Let's uncheck normal to profile, and for the reference, let's select this line here, like this. And now we can go here with, for example, 100 millimeters. Let's go with 100, like this. Let's go with preview. And this is pretty much the same result. So what is the difference in this case? Let's cancel this. Let's go again to the rip. Let's select here a circle. Let's select this line. Let's go with preview. The difference is that here we have a profile control. Now we have by the default keep angle. We can change this. We can go pulling direction. So the keep angle option sweeps the profile in the direction normal to the center curve as well as the pad. But here we can go with pulling direction. This one here. And the pulling direction option sweeps the profile along the direction that you define. For example, here we can define a new selection. So here in the selection, we can select, for example, this plane here, X, Y plane. And let's go here with move profile to pet. And let's go with preview. And now we got this result. And this is the result that we couldn't get with a pet. As well, we can select here a different plane. We can go, for example, with this one here, like this. And let's go with preview. And now we got this result, as you can see. Now let's cancel this and let's change here the pad. Now here we have a straight line, but we can also have a curve. So let's go here to the part body and let's go here to the sketch too, like this. Let's delete this line. Let's select here spline. Let's go here from the origin, like this. Let's create some spline, for example, like this. Let's go with escape and let's exit the workbench like this. Now let's go here to rip again. Let's select the profile here and let's select your center curve. Let's select this curve like this and let's go with preview. And this is our result. We can also change here the profile control so we can go with pulling direction. We can select this plane, for example, move profile to pet and let's go with preview. And now we got this result. So the rip comment requires a center curve and profile, but as well, we don't have to use only curve. 
we can use some edge as a pet. So let's cancel here and let's open a new file. Let's open a file rip. This one here. So here we have this edge, as you can see, this one here, and here we have a profile. And now we want to sweep this profile along this edge. We can also for that use a rip. So let's go here to the rip. Now we have to select the profile. Let's select this profile. And here for a center curve, let's select this curve. Like this, let's go with preview. And this is the result. Here on the profile control, we have a third option. And this is reference surface. The reference surface option is useful while sweeping a profile along a non-planar pad. And this is non-planar pad. So let's select your reference surface and let's select this surface like this. And let's go with preview. And now we got a slightly different result. Now we're going to show the second tool and this is slot tool. With a slot tool, instead of adding material, we're going to remove material. So let's go here to the slot like this. Let's select this profile here, this one here, and here for a center curve, let's select this edge. Like this, let's go to the preview. And let's click OK. And now we got this result. Now, as you can see, we have remove material here. We didn't add material, we have remove material. If you want to remove more material, we can go here. Let's go here to the slot one. Let's go here to the sketch tree, this one here. And now we can stretch this rectangle like this, for example. And let's exit the workbench. And now we got this result. So this is also possible. So with the rip, you add a material and with the slot, you cut material. So this is how you can work with the tools rip and slot. Now we're going to show tools drafted filleted bed and drafted filleted pocket. With drafted filleted bed, we can create a drafted bed feature with fillets. And with drafted filleted pocket, we can create a drafted pocket with fillet. So let's go here to this plane and let's create a new sketch. Let's go with rectangle here. Like this. Let's go here to the auto constraint. Let's select this rectangle. And let's go with OK. Now let's exit the workbench. Let's go here to the pad. And let's leave everything as it is. Let's click OK. Like this. Let's go to this face again. Let's create a new sketch. Let's select a rectangle. Let's create a rectangle with random dimensions like this. Now let's exit the workbench. Now if we click here on this arrow on the pad tool, here we have a tool drafted filleted pad. Let's select this tool. Now here we have a new dialog box. For the first limit, we have a length 20 millimeters. We can change this so we can increase this, for example, like this. And here for a second limit, we don't have any selection. So we can select, for example, this face here like this. Here we have a draft angle. We can uncheck this if we want, but let's check this. Let's go here with 15 degrees. Let's go with tab. And here we have a fillets. We're going to show those fillets later. Now let's go to the preview like this. And now we got this result. As you can see, extrusion, but here we have a drafted angles. Here we can see we have some fillets. If you don't want these fillets, you can uncheck this. This one, this one, this one, and you can go with preview. And now here we don't have fillets. We can go with preview. You can change here the value. So we can go, for example, with 10. Let's go with tab, preview. Now we got this result. We can go with first limit radius. Let's go with preview. Now we got this radius here. And if you want this radius here, now we got these fillets here. If you want to fillets here, we can go here with second limit radius. Let's go with preview. And let's go with OK. And this is our result. So this is the simple way how you can use a tool drafted filleted pad. The same way you can use a tool drafted filleted pocket. So let's go here to the specification tree. Let's delete here pad 2. Let's go with OK. Like this. Let's go to this face again. Let's create a new sketch. Let's create rectangle with random dimensions. Like this. Let's exit the workbench. Now let's go here. Let's click on this arrow. And here we have a tool drafted filleted pocket. Here we also have a first limit depth, 30 millimeters. Let's go here with 10 millimeters. Let's go with tab like this. The second limit, we're going to select this face here like this. Here we have an angle 15 degrees and here we have the fillets. Let's go with preview. And now we got this result as you can see. If you don't want those fillets, you can uncheck here 
like this and let's go with preview now we got this result but let's check those fillets like this let's go with preview and let's go with okay and this is our result you can create a sketch on the standard planes those standard planes are here on the specification tree and we can see them here you can also create a sketch here on the face you can select this face this face or this face or any face on the 3d model as well you can create a new plane manually and then you can create a sketch on that plane so let's show how this works so here we have this model and make sure that you have here toolbar reference elements if you don't see it you can right click here and here you will find reference elements here we have a plane so let's select plane here we have a plane type reference offset and traverse direction the first plane type that we have here is offset from plane so now we can select any face or plane here for example this one here and now our new plane is 20 millimeters off from this face here we can go reverse direction here and now this plane is 20 millimeters from this face in this direction let's go reverse direction again here we can change the offset now we have 20 we can increase it and we can decrease it like this we can select your reference and as a reference we can also select standard plane like this and now here we have from this plane 20 millimeters new plane as you can see now if we want to create a sketch on this plane we can click ok you can select this plane and you can create a new sketch like this for example now we can go here with some circle let's go like this for example let's exit the workbench like this let's go here let's select the pet let's go here with dimension let's select here this circle like this and let's click ok and now here we have this feature as you can see let's select this plane again as a reference let's select this face here we have option repeat object after ok so now if we want to create here multiple planes with distance 22 millimeters we can check this one repeat object after ok let's go with ok and now here we can enter a number of instances for example let's go with four and let's go with okay and now here we have a four planes with distance between each other 20 millimeters let's select here a plane let's go here to plane type let's go here parallel true point so what it means we have to select one point and we have to select one face for example we can select this face and we can select this point here and now here we have a new plane that goes through this point and that's parallel to this face here as you can see the next option that we have here is angle normal to plane so here we have to select rotation axis so for example we can select this edge here like this now here we have the angle zero we can increase the angle like this and here you can see the plane you can see the orientation of the plane if you change the angle around this edge here the next option that we have here is true three points so we can select three points for example we can select this point here this point here and this point here and now our plane goes through those three points here let's go here through two lines now we can select two lines for example we can select this line and this line or edge and now here we have a plane as you can see that goes through those two lines those two edges then we have through point and line so we can select any point for example this one here and we can select the line now you can see that this plane goes through this point and this line here let's click ok and now you can see that this plane goes through this point and this line and here we can create a sketch let's go to plane again let's go here with true planner curve like this now we have to select the curve let's select this curve here and now we can see that this plane goes through this curve the next option that we have is normal to curve and now this plane is normal perpendicular to this curve and here we have a point middle we can select this one and now we can select for example this point here and now here we have a plane and now this plane is also normal to this curve but at this point here not at the midpoint the next one that we have here is tangent to surface 
So we can select this surface and here, the green one, we have a plane, as you can see, that's tangent, this one here, is tangent to this surface. Then here we have equation. Here is our equation, AXBYCZ equals D. Here we can enter A, B, C. So let's go, for example, with 2, let's go with 5, let's go here with 4, like this. And we can select a point. For example, let's select this point here, and this is our orientation of the plane, this one here. And the last option that we have is mean true points. Now we can select here many points. For example, we can select this point, we can select this point here, and this is our plane. This plane goes through this, this, and this point. Let's click OK. And now if you want to create a sketch, for example, on this plane, you can select this plane, we can go here to the sketch, we can go here with rectangle, for example, something like this, exit workbench, like this, let's go here, pocket, let's go reverse direction, let's increase the depth, actually let's go to the 50, like this, and let's go with OK. And now we got this result, as you can see. So this is how you can create a plane. So to create a sketch, you only need standard plane, face, or you can create a plane manually. Now we're gonna show how to use the tool Stiffener and Solid Combine. Stiffener tool creates a stiffening features to add structural stability, strength, and support to your design. You only need two-dimensional sketch. So here we have this model, and now we want to add structural stability to this model. So we're going to create a stiffener. So let's select this plane, and let's create a new plane. Like this. Let's go here with offset 35 millimeters. Let's click OK. Now we're going to create a two-dimensional sketch on this plane. Let's select this plane. Let's go to the sketch. Let's select your profile. Let's start here. From this point you can pick here any point for example here like this let's go with straight line now let's go here and let's select here tangent arc like this let's create an arc here like this let's go with a line here like this let's go with escape now let's exit workbench and now using this sketch we're gonna create stiffener so let's go here and here we have a stiffener if you don't see it you can click on this arrow and you will find here. So first we have to select here the profile. So let's select this profile here. And here we can see the preview. Here we have the thickness one millimeter. We can increase the thickness. Let's go to five, like this. Here we have neutral fiber. We can uncheck this. And now we have only in one direction. Now we can go with the reverse direction like this, as you can see. Let's go with the preview. So this is how this looks like. This is how we can add structural stability to this model. Here we have from side, and you can go here from top, like this. Let's go with a preview. Now we got this result. Now here we have a thickness one, and you can go also here with thickness two in different direction, like this. Let's go with a preview. And now we got a this result. But let's go here with zero. Let's go with tab, and let's go here from side, like this. Let's go with a preview. And let's go here with thickness 10 and let's go with step like this. Let's go with reverse direction. Let's go with preview. And this is what we want. Let's click OK. And now we have added the structural stability to our model. The second tool that we're going to show is solid combine. So let's open a new file. Solid combine. This one here. Solid combine creates a solid body by using two sketches which are perpendicular to each other. So here we have two sketches. And those two sketches are perpendicular to each other, as we can see here. So you can go here and you can select here Solid Combine. You can click on this arrow and you will find here Solid Combine, like this. So here we have to select the first component profile. Let's select this one here. And here we have to select the second component profile. Let's select this one here, like this. Let's go with a preview, like this. Here for direction, we have normal to profile by the default. But we can uncheck this 
and you can use some sketch or a line for direction. Now let's click OK. And this is our solid body that we have created by using two sketches that are perpendicular to each other. Now we're going to show tools, multi-section solid and remove multi-sections solid. The multi-section solid tool creates a solid by defining two cross sections and joining them together. You can change the cross-sectional shape of a solid. So to use this tool, we need at least two cross sections. So let's go here to this plane, XY plane, and let's create a new sketch. Let's create the first cross section. Let's select your rectangle, center rectangle. Let's go here to the origin, like this. Let's go with some random dimensions. Like this, let's go to the auto constraint. Let's select this rectangle. Let's go with OK. Let's exit the workbench. And now we're going to create a new plane. So let's go here. Let's select this plane. And here for the reference, we're going to select this plane here. Like this. Let's go here with 200 and hit enter. Like this. Now here we have a new plane. Let's select this plane and let's create here new sketch. Let's select rectangle. Let's go here to the origin. And let's create rectangle like this. Let's go with the auto constraint. Let's select this rectangle. And let's click OK. Let's exit the workbench. Now here we have two rectangles, as we can see. The first one and the second one. And now we're going to create 3D solid by combining those two cross sections. Section used for creating multi-solid should have a matching number of segments. So four-sided section, as we have here, 1, 2, 3, 4, will loft nicely to another four-sided section, no matter of differences in shape of the individual segments. So we're going to show that later. Now let's go here, let's select here, multi-sections, solid, this one here. So here we have to select our sections. So let's select the first section, let's select the second section, and let's go with preview, like this. And this is our result. Now if you see here, here we have the section 2, and here we have the section 1. Here we have the closing point 1, and here we have the closing point 2. You want to make sure that those two closing points on two sections are on the same side, as you can see, here and here. If they're not on the same side, then your model will be twisted. So how you can fix it if your closing point 1 is here, for example? You can click here on the closing point, right click, and you can go to replace. And you can click here at this point now. This one here. And now you can see the closing point is here. Now if we go with the preview, you can see that our model is twisted now because those two closing points are not on the same side. But this is not what we want. So we can go right click on the closing point, replace, and let's select this point here, like this. Now here we have a closing point here, and let's go with preview. And this is what you're looking for. But now as you can see, here we have the straight lines. You can change here, for example, and you can go here with some curve. So let's cancel this, and let's go to this sketch. This one here, and now let's delete this line here this one here and let's go here with three point arc like this let's select this point here let's go with another point here and the third point here like this let's go here to the auto constraint let's select this sketch let's go with okay and let's exit the workbench like this now here we have also four sided section but we don't have a straight line so let's go here let's select this tool Let's select here the first section, let's select here the second section. Make sure that you select on the same side here, like this. And let's go with preview. Now we can see that our model is twisted. So we can go here to the closing point 2, right click, replace, let's go to this point here. And let's go with preview. And now this is our result. Now we can see that between those two cross sections we have a straight line, as you can see. If you want to change this, if you want to sum curve here, then you can add here a spine. So let's add here a spine, let's cancel this, and let's go here to the ZX plane. Let's create a new sketch. Like this, let's go here to the spline. Let's start here at the origin, and let's create some spline like this. Now let's rotate this, let's go here right in the center, like this. Let's escape. Now we can move this point like this a little bit. 
and let's exit the workbench like this. Now let's select this tool again, multi-section solid. Let's select here the first cross section, the second cross section like this. Now let's go right click on the closing point, replace. Let's go to this point here like this, closing point one and closing point two. Let's go here to the spine. Let's click here and let's select this curve like this. Let's go with preview. And now we got this result. Now we can see that between those two cross sections, we don't have a straight line. We have these four. Instead of a spine, we can also use guide curves. So let's go here to another example. Let's go to the multi-section guide. This one here. And here we have three cross sections. The first one, second one, and the third one. And here we have two guide curves. Guide curves allow you to control the behavior of a multi-section solid between cross sections. Guide curves must touch the cross sections, as you can see here. They must touch this cross section, this cross section here, and this cross section here. While in the previous example, the spine was connecting cross sections right in the center. Now let's go here to the multi-section solid. Let's select this cross section, this cross section here, and this cross section here. Let's go with a preview. And now we got this result, as you can see. Now we want to control the cross sections between those cross sections. Then we can use here guides. So let's go here to the guides. Let's click here. Let's click on this guide here. Like this. And let's click on this guide here. Like this. Let's go with the preview. And now we got a different shape, as you can see. Again, if you have a twisted, you can change the closing points. Let's go with OK. And this is our result. Let's go to another example. Let's go here to the limitation. Like this. Here we have two cross sections, as you can see. The first cross section, the second cross section, and here we have a guiding curve. And now we can see that here, at the end, we don't have a cross section. So let's go here to the multi section solids. Let's see what kind of result we're gonna get. So let's select this cross section and this cross section here, like this. And let's go here to the spine. Let's select this curve. Let's go with the preview. And now we can see that we got a solid only between those two cross sections. And now if you want to create the multi-section solid up to the complete length of the spine or guides, then click here on the limitation and then check here relimited on the start section and on the end section. Like this and let's go with preview. And let's click OK. So this is our result. So you use relimitation when you want to create multi-section solid up to the complete length of the spine. So this happens when you don't have a cross section at the start or at the end of the spine. So now we show how we can add material between cross sections. Now we're gonna show how we can remove material between cross sections. So let's go here to the another example. Let's go here to the removing multi sections. So here we have this material as you can see and here we have those three cross sections. And now we wanna remove material between those cross sections. So let's go here, let's select here, removed multi-section solid. And here we have the same options as with multi-section solid. So let's select this section here, this one here, and this one here, like this. Let's go with preview. Now here we have some error, let's go with OK. So here we have a twist. Now we can see that those two arrows here are in the same direction, and this one here is not. So let's click on this one here, like this. Let's go with preview, and now works. Let's click OK. And now we can see that between those cross sections, we have to remove material. So this is how you can use a multi-section solid and removing multi-section solid tools. Now we're gonna show how we can create a point. With point, we can create a point in the 3D space using seven different methods. So also here we need a reference elements toolbar and here we have a point. Let's select this point. Before in the course, we showed how we can create a point when we create a sketch. And now we're gonna show how we can create a point in the 3D space. So the first point type is coordinates. So we can enter here coordinates. For example, let's go 100, 100, and let's go with 100. Let's go with tap. And here is our point. And here is our coordinate system. So we have in three directions, 100, and here is our new point. And now we can use this point, for example, to create a plane or to create a sketch. The next option that we have here is on curve. So we can select, for example, here we have curve. Let's select this curve. 
and now we can position our point on this curve. Here we can see how the length is changing, so we can enter a value here, or we can select manually a point here, like this. Here we have distance on curve, we can also go distance along direction, now for example we can select this edge here, and here we can go with the offset, as you can see now, like this. And here we have a ratio of curve length, we can select this one, and here we have a ratio, this ratio is from 0 to 1. If we go here, for example with 0.5, let's go with tap, now our point is right here in the middle. If we increase the ratio, for example to 1, now our point will be at this end point. And here we have on plane, so we can select here a plane. So for example, we can select here a plane or face. Let's select this face. And now we can position a point on this face. Here we can enter horizontal and vertical value or we can position a point here, like this. And now here we have a point on this plane. The next option that we have here is on surface. So for example, we can select this surface and now we can position point on this surface, for example here, like this. You can also enter the distance value here manually. The next option that we have here is center of the circle, sphere or ellipse. For example, ok, let's go with ok. Let's select this edge here, like this. Let's click ok. And now as we can see, this point is right here in the center of this curve. Let's go to the point again. Let's go here tangent on the curve. Let's select this curve. And now here for direction, we can select for example this edge. And here is our point tangent on curve. Let's click OK. Now for example, we can create a plane that goes through this point, this point and this point here. Let's go here to the point again. And the last option that we have is between. So we can create a point between two points. So we can select this point here, for example, and this point here. And now here we have ratio, now is zero. Let's increase the ratio. And now we can see how our point travels along this edge. And now we can position this point between those two points that we have defined. For example, let's go here to the 0 0.7. Like this, let's click OK. And here is our point. And here is our point. And now, for example, we can select a plane. And you can go here through three points. We can select this point, this point, and this point here. Let's go with OK. And now we have a plane that goes through those three points. And now here we can create a new sketch. So this is how you can create a point in the 3D space. And now we're going to show how to create a line in the 3D space. So let's go here to the reference elements toolbar. And here we have a line. The first line type is point point. So we have to select two points. For example, we can select this point here and this point here, like this. And now here we have a line. Here we can define the start. We can increase here the value. Now you can see the start is here. And as well, we can go here to the end and we can increase this value. And now we can see that the end is here. And this is our line. Let's click OK. Let's go to the line again. Now let's select your point direction. Now we can select any point here. For example, we can select this point here. And now here we have to select direction. So let's select this edge, like this. And now line goes through this point with direction of this edge here. So we can also increase here the start value. Let's go to negative, like this. And the end value, like this. Let's click OK. And here is our line. Let's select line again. Let's go here to the angle normal to curve. So we have to select a curve. Let's select this curve here, like this. Now we have to select a point. Let's select this point. And here we have our line. And now we can see that this line is normal to this curve. Here we can change the angle, like this. Let's go to 70. Also we can go with a start here and with the end value. And down here we have a line type, we have a length, we can go infinite start point, and now we can see that the start point is in infinite. We can go infinite end point like this, or we can go infinite start and end. Let's go with length, and let's click OK. And here is our line. Let's go to the line again. Let's select here tangent to curve. So now we can select also 
for example, this curve, and let's select this point here, like this, and now this line is tangent to this curve, as we can see here. We can also define the start and the end value, and here we have a length type. Let's go with OK. Now we can see that this line here is tangent to this curve here. Let's go to the line again. Let's select here in normal to surface. Now we can select this surface, for example, like this, and let's select this point here, like this. Now you can see that this line goes through this point and it's normal to this surface. Let's click OK and this sort of line. So this line is normal to this surface, perpendicular, and goes through this point. The last option that we have here is bisecting. So we're going to select two lines. The first line, this one here, for example, this edge, and the second line, this line here like this. Now let's click OK. Now we can see that this line goes through intersection of this edge here and this line here. Now we're going to create a plane by using as a reference those lines. So let's go here to the plane. Let's select here through point and line. So let's select the point, this one here. Let's select this line like this. Let's click OK. And now we can see that this plane goes through this point and this line here. So this is how you can create a line in the 3D space. Now we're going to show how we can manipulate with our model by using view toolbar. So here we have our model and here we have a view toolbar. If you don't see this view toolbar, you can right click and here you will find view toolbar. So here we have an option fit all in. So for example, if you don't see your model on the screen, something like this. You can just simply click here, fit all in, and your model is back here. If you want to move your model, you can use here a pen. You can select this, and now you can move your model, like this. If you want to rotate your model, you can also use here a tool rotate. So you can select here, rotate, and now you can rotate your model, like this. If you want to zoom in and zoom out, here we have zoom in. You can click it, and we have zoom out, like this. Here we have normal view. So for example, we want to have a normal view on this face. So we can select this face and we can click here normal view like this. Or we can select this face and you can go here normal view like this. Here we have a multi view. So let's click here to create multi view. So here we have four views. Now if we want to work in this view, we can click here and now we can rotate our model here we can go zoom in, zoom out, and so on. If we want to work with this view, we can click here, and now we can rotate, and we can move this model here. As well, we can create here some features. For example, we can go to this face here, like this. Let's go here, and let's create a sketch. Like this, let's select here circle. Let's create some circle. Let's exit the workbench. And as you can see, this circle has been created in this view, in this view, and in this view as well. Now let's go here, let's select pocket. Let's go with 20 millimeters depth, let's click OK. And now this hole we can see on all four views. If you want to exit from the multi-view, you can uncheck here, create multi-view. And now here we can see our hole. Here we can also change the view of our model. So we can click on this arrow, and here we have different views. For example, we can go with isometric view, like this. You can click here, we can go with front view, we can go with back view, we can go with side view, left, right, we can go with top, bottom view. For example, let's go with left view. And now here we have a left view. But let's go here to the isometric view, like this. Here we have the option visual style. Now we have shading with edges, we can click on this arrow, and here we have different options. We can go with shading. Now we got this option, now we don't see our edges. Let's click here. Here we have option shading with edges without smooth edges. And this is the result. Let's click on this arrow. Here we have also the option shading with edges and hidden edges like this. And now here we can see the hidden edges. Let's click again here. Here we have option shading with material like this. Let's go here. And here we have the option wireframe like this. But let's go here to the shading with edges this one here. Here we have an option hide show. So we can click on this option here 
now we have to select the element that we want to hide so let's select this one here and now our 3d model is hidden if we want to show it again we have to open here part body and now here we can see that those icons here are transparent and now to show our model we can click on this icon right click and we can go with hide show or we can click on this one here and now here we can go with hide show and our model is back and the last option that we have here is swap visible space so we can swap the visible space by clicking here like this and now we can go back so those are some helpful tools how you can manipulate how you can change the view and the appearance of your model in this lecture we're going to show tool edge fillet the edge fillet tool breaks the sharp edges of a model and blends them and there is no need for a sketch to create a fillet so here we have the sharp edges and now we can break those sharp edges and we can blend them so let's go here to dress up features toolbar if you don't see this toolbar you can go right click here and here you will find dressed up features toolbar the first tool that we have here is edge fillet let's select this tool now here we have the dialog box edge fillet definition so we have to define the radius we have to find the object to fill it and here we have selection mode let's go first with the selection mode tangency let's go with radius 5 millimeters let's select for example this edge here and this edge here like this we can go with the preview and now we can click ok and now we have no longer here sharp edges let's go to the fillet again for example we can select this edge here this one here and let's go with ok and now here we have a fillet we can also go here and you can for example select this edge here like this let's go with ok and now here we have a fillet now let's go here to the fillet here we have the selection mode tangency so what it means so if you select this edge here then all edges will be selected that are tangent to this edge so let's select this edge and now we can see that those edges here this one here this one here 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 and here are also selected because they are tangent to this edge here now let's go with ok and now here we have a fillet like this now let's go back like this let's select this tool again edge fillet now instead of a tangency let's select here minimal when you have a minimal here then you select this edge only this edge will be selected the other edges that are tangent will be ignored so let's go with ok and now we got this result which is different result let's go to the edge fillet again and down here we have an option conic parameters so by the default the edge fillets have a circular arc profile as we can see here if we go here we can see this is circular arc profile but we can also create a conic arc profile so you can check your conic parameter and you can go here for example to maximum and now let's select this edge for example let's go with okay and now we can see the difference between this fillet here and this fillet here here we have a circular arc profile and here we have a conic arc profile let's go here to the edge fillet again let's uncheck your conic parameter and let's go here to the selection mode let's go here to the intersection with selected features with this option we can fill it the intersection between two features for example we can select this feature here as an object to fill it and here selected features we can click here and we can select this feature here and now we can see the red area here this intersection area and on this area we're going to create a fillet so let's go with ok and now we got this result of course you can go manually and click one edge by one to get the same result let's go back now like this let's go here to the edge fillet let's go here to the more and here we have some other options and here we have an option limiting elements so what it means for example we want to create a fillet from this point here to this point here so first we have to select the edge that you want to fill it but let's go here with minimal let's select this edge like this now let's go here to the limiting elements and now we have to select the point where we want to start our fillet let's go to this point here we can change direction we can go to this direction or we can click on this arrow and then we can go to this direction but let's go to this direction 
and let's go with OK. And now here we have a fillet from this point here to this point here. Now let's select the edge fillet again. Let's go here to the more. And here we have an option, blend corners. Blend corners is used to blend edge fillets that come together at corner. For example, here we have three edges that are meeting at this point. And now we can blend those fillets. So let's select this edge here, this one here, and this one here. And now we can go here to the blend corners. We can go here, right click, and let's go with create by edges. Like this, let's go with OK. And now we can see that those three fillets are blended here at this point, at this corner. Now let's go to another example. Let's go to the fillet 2 file. Now we're going to show how we can trim the intersection portion of two fillets. So let's go here to the fillet. Let's select this edge here. And let's select this edge here, like this. And now if we click OK, this won't work. Because those two fillets are intersecting with each other. Let's go with OK. Let's go with Yes. Now if we want to avoid that, we have to check here Trim Ribbons. So we have to trim the intersection portions. So let's go with OK now. And now it works. Now you can see because those two fillets intersect with each other. And now we have to trim this intersection. But now here we have a problem. As you can see, here we have a deformation on this edge here. If we want to avoid this deformation, let's go to the power body. Let's go to the edge fillet. Let's go to more. And here we have edges to keep. Let's select here. Let's select this edge here. Let's go with OK now. Now we can see this edge is not deformed. Now let's go to the fillet 1 file again. This one here. Now we can click here on this arrow and here we have another option of fillet. Here we have the variable radius fillet. So we can use this tool to create a fillet with varying radius along the selected edge. So for example, we can select this edge like this. And now here we have two points this one here and this one here. And here we have a radius 5 and 5. You can double click here on the radius and you can go here with, for example, 15. Let's go with OK. And now here we have a 15 and here we have a 5. Let's go with OK now. Now we can see how the radius of the fillet is different along this edge. So this is how you can use this tool, varying fillet radius. We have here another tool and this is cordial fillet. We use this tool to create a fillet by specifying its cord length instead of a radius. So what is the cord length? The cord length is the distance between the endpoints of the fillet profile. So let's select this tool. And now here we have to specify the cord length. Let's go with 5. Like this. Let's select here this edge, for example. And let's go with OK. And now we got this result, as you can see. Now you can see those two results are different because here we have a radius five millimeters and here we have a quart length five millimeters so the quart length is the length between this point here or this edge here and this point here on this edge as you can see this is the quart length now let's go here to the third example this is face fillet now we're going to show another tool here let's click on this arrow and here we have a tool face face fillet let's select this tool with this tool, we can create a fillet between two faces, and those faces are not required to be connected with each other. But now, for example, let's create a fillet between this face here and this face here. So we can select this face and this face. Let's go with OK, and here we have a fillet. Let's go back. Let's select this tool again, face to face. Now, for example, we want to create a fillet between this face here and this face here. And this is also possible. Those two faces are not connected, but it's possible to create a fillet. Let's select this face and this face. Now let's go with the radius 30 and let's click OK. And now here we have a fillet, as you can see. Let's go back. And the last tool that we have here that we're going to show is three tangent fillet. With three tangent fillet, we can create a fillet between three faces. It replaces the middle face with fillet. So for a faces to fillet, we're going to select this face and this face here. And faces to remove, we're going to select this one here. And this face will be replaced with fillet. This is the middle face. So let's go with OK. And as you can see, this face has been replaced with fillet. So those are all options how you can use a tool fillet. Now we're going to show tools chamfer and draft. 
Let's first go with chamfer. The chamfer tool comments adds bevel face to the model. So let's show how this works. Let's go here to the dress up features and let's select your chamfer. Here we have a mode option, length one angle. Also we can go with length one, length two, we can show this later. Let's go with length one angle. So we can go here with length one, let's go with five. Tap, and here we can go with an angle. Let's go with 60, let's go tap. And now we have to select the object that we want to chamfer. So let's select this object here. And here we have a propagation tangency, or we can go with minimal. Let's go first here with tangency. Let's click OK. And this is our result, as you can see. Now let's go here with length 1, length 2, like this. Now we have to define the length 1 and length 2. Let's go with length 2, 2 millimeters. Let's hit tap. Let's select this edge. And let's go with OK. And now here we have this result. So here we have the angle 60 degrees. And here we have a length 1 in this direction, 5 millimeters. And here we have the length 2, 2 millimeters in this direction. So this is how you can use a tool chamfer. Now we're going to show how you can use a tool draft. So let's go here to another example. Let's go to the draft. So the draft angle is an angle or taper applied to the faces of the part to make it easier to remove them from a mold, for example. To show how this works, let's go here, let's click on this arrow, and here we have a tool, draft angle. Let's select this tool. Here we have an angle, let's go with 5 degrees. Here we have the faces to draft, let's select this face, and now all those faces that are tangent will be selected. And here we have the neutral element, let's click here. Here we have to select the neutral element that won't change. So let's select this one here. And now let's go with OK. And now we can see that those faces here are at some angle. We can also go to different direction. So let's go here, draft one. We can click on this arrow. Now we go up, now we can go down. If we click here, and let's go with OK. And now we can see that we have an angle inside. Those faces are tapered inside. Let's go back, like this. Now let's go here to the draft again. Now let's go here with an angle, 10. And here for faces to draft, we're gonna select this face here. For the neutral element, we're gonna select this face here, like this. Let's go with OK. And now we got this result. Now this face remains the same, and this one here is drafted. Let's go back again. Now we're going to show how we can draft our faces up to some height. So here we have a plane, this one here, and now we want to draft those faces here up to this plane. So let's go here to the draft. Let's go here with faces to draft those faces. Here for the neutral element, let's select this face. Let's go here to the more. Here we have a parting element option. Let's check here parting neutral and let's check here draft both sides. Here for the limiting elements, we're going to select this plane here, like this. Now let's go with OK. Now you can see that those faces has been drafted up to this plane here on this side and up to this plane here on this side as well. Let's go back again, like this. Now we're going to show here another tool and this is variable angle draft. So with this tool, we can create a different draft along faces. So let's select this tool. So here we have an angle. Let's select faces to draft. Let's select those faces. Let's go here, neutral elements. Let's select this face here, like this. And now here we have a point. Let's select here. Now we can define the different points here on this edge. For example, here, here, and here. And now here we have an angle 5 degrees. We can change now this angle at this point. For example, let's go here with 2 degrees. Let's go with OK. Let's go here with 10 degrees. And let's go with OK. Like this, let's click OK here. And now you can see that here we have a different angle. You can see the deformation here that we have. So here we have 2 degrees, 5 degrees, and here we have 10 degrees, and here we can see the deformation. Let's go to another example that we have here, and this is draft reflect line. With draft reflect line tool, we can create a draft by using the silhouette edges reflected lines of the curved feature. So let's go here, let's click on this arrow, 
and here we have a tool draft reflect line. Let's select this tool. Here we have the angle 5 degrees. Here we have to select the faces to draft. Let's select this face. Here we have the pulling direction. Let's click here. Let's select this face here, like this. Let's go here to the more, and let's go here with the defined pouring element. Let's select this face here, like this. Let's click OK. Now we have connect this cylinder here with this face here. So those are all options how you can use a tool draft and chamfer. The next tool that we have here on the dress up features toolbar is shell. Shell takes a solid geometry and makes it hollow. So here we have a solid geometry and now we want to make a hollow geometry. So let's go here, let's select shell. So here we have inside thickness and outside thickness. And here we have faces to remove. For example, let's go with this face to remove. This one here. And let's go here with inside thickness, two millimeters. Let's go with okay. And now we got this result, as you can see. Let's go back. Let's select shell again. Now we can select here multiple faces to remove. For example, we can select this face here, this face here, and this face here. Now we can go here, default inside thickness one millimeter, and we can go with outside five millimeters. Let's click OK. Now here we have the overall thickness six millimeters, and those three faces are removed. This one here, this one here, and this one here. As you can see, this is the result. Let's go back. Let's go here to the shell again. Let's select your faces to remove. Let's select this one here, this one here, and this one here again. Now let's go here with a default inside thickness one millimeter. Here we have an option other thickness faces. So let's select here. And now, for example, we want that the thickness will be one millimeter, except on this face here, where we want a thickness 10 millimeters. Let's go with tap. And let's select this face here, where we want thickness five millimeters. Let's go with a tap. Let's click OK. And now, as you can see, we removed those three faces. Here we have a thickness one millimeter here, 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 and on this face here. But here we have a thickness 10 millimeters, and here we have a thickness 5 millimeters. So you can add different thicknesses on different faces. So those are all options that you have here with a tool shell. Now we're going to show how to create a multi-body part. Multi-body part is a part that consists of two or more bodies. So why would we use a multi-body part? There are some design techniques that we can't achieve by using only one body. We have to use a multi-body part. And now we're going to show how to create a multi-body part. Here by default, we have only one part body, part body, as we can see here. If we want to create another part body, we can go here, insert, and let's go here with body. And now here we have body two. And now here we have a multi-body part. Now if we want to create a new feature in the part body here, we can go here, right click, and let's go here, define in work object. So make sure that the body in which you want to create a feature is underlined, as you can see here. So now let's go here to this plane here, X, Y plane. Let's create a new sketch. Let's select a circle. Let's go here in the center, like this. Let's put some random diameter, like this. Let's X the workbench. Let's go here with pet, 20 millimeters, let's go with OK. So this is our part body one, and we can see that this pet one is in the part body here. So we can change the name here, so let's go right click, properties, let's call it body one. Let's go with apply and OK. Now let's go here again to the XY plane, let's create a new sketch. Like this, let's select a circle. And let's start here on this edge. And let's create a circle like this. Let's go with some random diameter. And let's exit the workbench. Let's go here with a pad. And let's go with OK. And now we can see this is only one body. And those two features are in the body one. And now for example, if we want to use a shell, let's select your shell. And if apply shell to this face here, let's go with OK. 
and we can see now that the shell is applied to the both features here, to the pad 1 and to the pad 2. For example, if we don't want to do this, if we want to apply a shell only to this pad here, to the pad 1, then we have to create a multi-body part. So let's show how this works. So let's go here to the pad 2, let's go right click, and let's go here with delete. Let's go with OK, like this. And now here we have only pad 1. Now let's go here to the body 2, right click, let's go here with the define in work object. And here is underlined. Now let's go again here to the XY plane. Let's create a new sketch. Let's select a circle here. Let's create the same circle, like this. Let's exit the workbench. Let's go with a pet. And let's go with OK. And now here we have two bodies. As you can see, those two bodies are not combined together. And now, for example, if we want to apply the shell only to this body here, we can select shell. Let's select this face here. Let's go with OK. And now we can see that the shell is only applied to this body here. It's not affected this body here. So in such a cases, you can use a multi-body part. Because if we have one body, then we can apply shell only to this feature here, to the pet too. So this is the idea of the multi-body part. In this lecture, we're going to show Boolean operations between two or more bodies. And those are assemble, add, remove, intersect, and union trim. So here we have one, two, three, and four bodies. And now we're going to show how we can assemble, add, remove, intersect those bodies. So let's go here to the Boolean operations toolbar. If you don't see this toolbar, you can go right click. And here you will find Boolean operations. As well, you can go here, insert. And here we have Boolean operations. So the first one that we have here is assemble. With this tool, you can assemble two bodies into a single body. So here we have body one and body two, as you can see. Part body and body two. Now, if we want to combine those two bodies into one body, we can use here tool assemble. Let's select this body here, body two and part body, like this. So here we have assemble body two to part body. Let's go with OK. And now here we have only one body, part body. So the body two is the part of the part body. As you can see, if we select this one here, you can see this is one body. Let's go back. Now here we have four bodies. The next tool that we have here is add. With add tool, we can combine two separate bodies. So pretty much this is the same as assemble, but we're gonna show the difference. Now let's select this add tool. Now we can select this body here and this body here, like this. Let's go with okay. And now we got the same result. So this is the one body. But now we're gonna show what is the difference between assemble and add. Here we have another two bodies. So here we have the body three, and here we have body 6. The body 6 consists only of this sketch here. Now we're going to use this sketch to create a cut here. So let's go here to the body 6, right click. Let's go with the find in work object, like this. Let's select sketch 10. Let's go here to the pocket. Let's go here with adapt 10. Let's hit enter, like this. And now here we have a pocket, but we don't see this pocket here. As you can see, here we don't have a hole because this body, this pocket, is inside of this body here, body tree. And now here we can apply tools Add and Assemble. So let's go here to the Add. Let's select here body 6. Let's select the body tree, like this. Let's go with OK. And now, as you can see, we got only one body. Now let's go back. Like this, now we have two bodies. Now let's select Assemble. Let's select here body 6, like this, and body tree like this. Let's click OK. And now we got this result. Now you can see that here we have a pocket, a hole. So this is the difference when you have assemble and add. If you used a pocket tool, then this pocket here will be applied if you use a tool assemble. If you use a tool add, then this pocket won't be visible. So this is the difference. Now let's go back like this. And here we have four bodies again. One, two, three, four, like this. Now let's go to another tool. Here we have a tool remove. So with the remove tool, we can subtract one solid body from another. So let's select this tool. And which body do we want to remove? Here we have to select from which body do we want to remove. 
let's select from this one here let's go with okay and now we got this result now we got this hole here as you can see let's go back again let's go to another tool here here we have intersect so with intersect we can generate a body defined by intersection volume of two bodies so let's select here intersect let's select this body here and this body here let's go with okay and this is the intersection between two bodies now let's go back and the last tool that we're going to show here is union trim so let's select this one here with union trim we can combine two bodies and trim unwanted portion so first we have to select body to trim let's select this one here like this now we have to specify the second body to trim with your first body let's select this one here like this and here we have faces to remove let's click here and let's select this face let's go with ok and now we can see that those two bodies become one body part body and this part here has been trimmed because we selected the face on this side and this part of the body was trimmed and now this is only one body so those are the boolean operations that you can use in the katia now we're going to show how to work with the tool rectangular pattern rectangular pattern replicates a feature using a rectangular layout so here we have this model and now for example we want to create a hole on this model actually we want to create here 50 holes so we want to have 10 holes in this direction and 5 holes in this direction so overall 50 holes so the one way how we can do this is that we can create here 50 sketches and then we can go here with a pocket and we can create holes the another way is the fastest way that we here create one hole and then we use here rectangular pattern tool so let's go in this space and let's create a new sketch let's go here let's select here circle let's go here let's create a circle like this let's go with the diameter let's select here let's go with 20 like this let's select here constraint let's select this circle and this edge here like this let's go here with 10 and hit enter like this let's select constraint again let's select this edge here this circle let's go with 10 as well like this let's exit the workbench like this now let's go here to the pocket let's go here with the depth 20 and let's go with ok now here we have a hole now we want to create 10 holes in this direction and 5 holes in this direction and for that we're going to use rectangular pattern so let's go here and let's select here rectangular pattern so here we have this dialog box here we have the parameters instances and spacing so we have to enter a number of instances so let's go here with 10 like this here we have a spacing now let's leave 20 and here down we have object that we want a pattern let's click here let's select this hole like this here we have to select the reference direction so let's select your reference element and we can select this edge or this edge here so let's select this edge and now here we have 10 holes let's increase the spacing between them let's go to 25 like this and now here we have 10 holes so this is the first direction here we have the second direction let's go to the second direction let's go with the instances let's go with five four five here we have the object pattern here we have this hole and here we have the reference so let's select here let's select this edge like this and let's increase the spacing like this let's go to 25 like this if you want to change the direction you can go here reverse now we go to the other side as you can see as well we can go here to the first direction and you can change here also direction let's go with reverse now we go to this side but this is not what we want let's go with reverse again like this now let's go with preview and this is our result as you can see now here we have 50 holes and we only created one hole this one here 
Let's go here to the more. Here we have options position of object in pattern. Here we have row in one direction. Now we can increase this, this number, like this. Now let's go with five here. Let's go with preview. So what is happening now? So here is our reference element. Now here we have five instances, one, two, three, four, five in this direction. And here we have four instances in this direction. As well, here we have row in direction two. So let's go here with three, like this. Let's go with preview, like this. Now here we have one, two, three in this direction and one, two in other direction, as you can see. As well, here we can change the rotation angle. So we can increase this. Now you can see how this pattern is rotating. So you can go here, for example, with 45, like this. We can go with preview and now we can click OK. And now this is our result, as you can see. So this is how you can use a simple rectangular pattern. Now let's go here to another example. Let's go with here, keep specifications like this. Now we want to pattern this object here to this side. So let's go here to the rectangular pattern, this one here. Let's go here to the first direction. Let's go here with four instances. Let's select here this object. Let's select your reference element. Let's select this edge here. Let's go here reverse direction like this. Let's go with preview, like this. Let's click OK. And now we got this result, as you can see. And this is not what we want, because those three objects don't go here to this face. If we want to achieve that those objects will be go to this face, then we have to go back to our pattern, rectangular pattern, double click. And here we have an option, keep specifications. So we're going to keep the specification of the path here, because the path here that we have it says up to next. So let's close this. Now let's go here to the path two, this one here. So here we have the up to next. This is the limit that I selected here. So let's go with okay here. Let's go here to the rectangular pattern, double click. And now let's check here, keep specification. So keep the specification up to next. Let's go with okay. And now those three objects are connected with this object here. So this is how you can use rectangular pattern. And now we're going to show how we can use a tool circular pattern. With circular pattern tool, we can pattern the selected feature in a circular fashion. So here we have this feature. Now let's go here. Let's click on this arrow. Let's select here circular pattern. So here we have the parameter instances and angular spacing. You can also select here instances and total angle, angular spacing and total angle, complete crown instances and unequal angular spacing. But let's go here with instances and angular spacing like this. Let's go here with five instances like this. Angular spacing is 45 degrees now. So the object that we want to pattern is this one here like this. And the reference direction, let's select here. Let's select this object here like this. Now we can see the preview. If we want to go to different direction, we can go here reverse like this. Let's go with preview. And this is our result. Now let's go here to the crown definition. Here we have the parameters circle and circle spacing. So for example, let's go here with two, like this, let's go with three. So here we have an option to radiate the circular pattern here, as we can see. So we can go with the spacing here, for example, 25, like this. Let's go with preview. And this is our result here. Now let's go here to the more. Here also we have row in angular direction. Let's go with two here. Let's go with preview like this. So here we have in this direction two and in this direction three. As well, here we have a row in radial direction. Let's go with two like this. Let's go with preview and this is our result. And now here we have two in one direction from the reference element and one in the second direction from the reference element. And this is what we want. We can click OK like this. So this is the result. Now let's go here. Let's go to the circle pattern again. Here we have another options as I mentioned before. Let's go here with instances and total angle. So the total angle now is 180. We can increase this for example to 300. Let's go with a preview. And now we got this result as you can see. Let's click OK. And this is completely different result. Let's go to the circle pattern again. 
Let's change here. Let's go here with angular spacing and total angle. So here we have the angular spacing 75 degrees. Let's go with 60 and total angle. Let's go with 250 like this. Let's go with preview. Let's click OK. And now this is the result. Let's go to the circle pattern again. Let's change here. Let's go to the complete crown. Now here we have 360 degrees and we can only change the number of instances. Now we have a five. We can increase this, for example, to six. Preview. And this is the result. And the last option that we have here is instances and unequal angular spacing. So here we can go with angular spacing and instances six. So let's change this. And now we can see that we are only changing the angular spacing of these instances. This one here, 80. This one is 60, 60, 60, 60. Now we can double click on this one here. And you can change this one, for example, to 30. Let's go with OK. And we can change this one here, for example, to 45. Let's go with OK. Let's click OK here. And now here we have unequal spacing between instances. So those are all possibilities how we can work with Circular Pattern Tool. As well, we have a tool User Pattern. User Pattern patterns the selected features by using user-defined points. So here we have this hole, and now we can define our points here, and then we can use those points as a positions to create a holes. So let's go here on this face, and let's create a new sketch. Let's create those points. So for example, we can go here, we can select three point arc. We can click here, here, and here, like this. And now let's go here and let's select here equidistant points, like this. Let's select this arc, like this. Here we have new points. Let's go here with seven, like this. Let's click OK. And now here we have those points. And now on those points, we're gonna create holes. So this will be our pattern. Now we created our own pattern. So let's exit the workbench like this. Now let's go here, let's click on this arrow. Let's select here user pattern tool like this. So we have to select the positions. Let's select this arc like this. Now this is not what we want. So let's go here to the object. Let's select this hole here. And this is what we're looking for. So we can go with a preview and let's go with okay. So this is our pattern that we have created. So you can also use a user pattern tool if you want to create your own pattern. You can also create a straight line as a pattern. So you can go here. Let's go to the new sketch. Let's go here with a line. Let's create some line here, vertical line like this. Let's go here, equidistant points. Let's select this line. Let's go here with four. Let's click OK. And let's exit the workbench. Now we can also go here, we can select use a pattern, this one here, let's select this line, let's go here to the object, let's select this hole, this one here, let's click OK. And now this is our pattern, this line. So this is how you can use a user pattern tool. The next tool that we're going to show is the tool Mirror. If the part is symmetric, you can replicate individual features of the entire body. All you need is the feature that you want to mirror, and you need a face or a plane to use as a mirroring element. So here we have this body, and now we want to mirror this body about this face here. For that, we're going to use a tool mirror. Here we have transformation features toolbar. If you don't see it, you can right click here, and you can go down here. And here you will find transformation features. Here we have a tool mirror. Let's select this tool. The first thing that we have to do is select a plane or a face. So let's select this face. This one here. And now we can see the mirroring element is this face. Object to mirror is this current solid. And let's click OK. And this is our result. Now, for example, we want to mirror those two bodies about this plane here. So let's go to the mirror, let's select this face, and let's click OK. And this is it. So this is how you can mirror a solid body about a face. We can also create a plane, so we can go here to the plane. Let's select this face, let's go with the offset distance 20 millimeters, and click OK. And now we're going to mirror this body here 
about this plane. So let's go here to the mirror. Let's select this plane. And here we have a result. Let's click OK. And now here we have two bodies, this one here and this one here. So this is how you can use a tool mirror. Here we have this body. And now, for example, we want to move this body to other position. In this case, we can go here to Transformation Features Toolbar, and here we have a Tool Translation. So let's select this tool. Let's go here with Yes. And here we have Vector Definition. By the default, we have Direction Distance. So for Direction, for example, we can select this edge here, this one here. And here for a Distance, we can go with 100. Let's go with Tap. And now here we can see where our part will be moved. We can go here with 200. Let's go with tap like this. Let's click OK. And now we have moved this body from this position to this position here. Let's go here to the translation again. Let's go with yes here. And now instead of direction distance, let's select here coordinates. And now here we have to specify to which position we want to move for our body. So for example, let's go in X direction, 100, in Y direction, 200, and in Z direction, 300. Let's go with OK. And now our part has been moved to this position here. So this is how you can translate your body in the 3D space. Now let's go here, let's click on this arrow, and let's go here to the rotation. Let's go with Yes here, this is just a warning, so let's go with Yes. And here we have definition mode, axis angle. So we have to define axis around which we want to rotate our body. So we can select here, for example, this edge here. This one here. And now here we have to define angle. So we can now increase the angle. And now we can see how our body is rotating around this axis, this edge. Let's go with 100. Like this. Let's click OK. And now we have rotated this body. Let's go here to the rotation again. Let's go with yes. We can go, for example, here with axis to elements. So here we have to select axis. Let's go with this edge here. And now we have to select the first element. Let's select this face. And the second element, let's select this face. And now we got this rotation, as you can see. Let's go with OK. And the third option that we have here, let's go with yes, is three points. So we have to define the three points. So for example, we can select, let's get closer. Let's go here to the first point. Let's select here the first point, second point. Let's go here with the third point. And now we got this rotation, as you can see here. Let's go with OK. And this is the result. The third tool that we have here, if we click on this arrow, is symmetry. Let's select this one here. Let's go with yes. Now, for example, we can mirror this body, this one here, about a face or a plane. But in this case, we can't keep the source object. While with the mirror tool, we can keep the source object. For example, we can mirror this body about this face, like this. Now we can see the preview. Let's click OK. But now we don't have a source object. If we want a source object, then we have to use a tool mirror. As well, let's select this tool again. Let's go with yes. Let's select this plane, ZX, like this. Here we can see our body. And let's click OK. And now we can see that we don't have a source object. Our body has been translated to this position. If we want to keep the source object, then we have to go to the mirror. We have to select this plane, for example, like this. Let's click OK. And now we have two bodies. Now we have a source body and a copy. So this is how you can use the tool translation, rotation, symmetry, and mirror. Now we're going to show some tools that can help you while creating a sketch. Those are Project 3D Elements, Intersect 3D Elements, and Project 3D Silhouette Edges. Let's start first with Project 3D Elements. With this tool, you can project the edges of a 3D geometry onto a sketch plane. So let's show how this works. Let's select this face. Let's create a sketch on this face. Let's go here to the sketch. Like this. Now, for example, on this face here, we want to create a sketch that will have this circle and this circle here. To do that, we can use a circle tool or we can go here to the operation toolbar 
and here we have a tool project 3d elements and now we can select this tool we can select this edge here like this and now if we rotate this we can see that this edge has been projected to this face and now we can use this sketch but let's go here normal too like this let's select here project 3d elements let's select this edge here like this and now here we have two sketches this one here and this one here so we don't have to use a circle tool now we can exit the workbench we can select here pet like this let's go with length 20 let's go with okay and now here we have those two elements as well we don't have to create a sketch on the face we can go with a new plane for example we can create a new plane let's go here like this let's select this one as a reference like this let's go with okay let's select this plane let's go and let's create a sketch like this let's go to different directions so let's click here normal view like this this one here now let's select here project 3d elements let's select this edge here like this let's select again let's select this edge here let's go with this edge here like this and now instead of selecting those two edges we're gonna select your profile and we're gonna create a profile we're gonna start from this point here let's go up like this let's go to the right side like this let's go down like this so we can also combine sketch tools and project 3d elements now we can go here exit workbench like this and now we can use the sketch so we can go to the pad let's select the sketch like this let's go with ok and this is our model so this is how we can use a project 3d elements tool now we're going to show how we can use intersect 3d elements so let's go here to this plane this one here yz plane let's go let's create a sketch like this let's click on this arrow here and here we have a tool intersect let's select this tool now we have to select the elements that we wish to be intersected with the sketch plane so we can select this element here this face and now here we have a sketch line and this line is the intersection between this plane here and this face and now we can use this line to create some sketch so let's go normal too like this now we can select here for example profile let's start here let's go to the left let's go down let's go to the right like this let's exit the workbench like this and now we can go to the pet and let's go with okay and now here we have a new feature and this is how you can use intersect 3d elements and the last tool that we're going to show is project 3d silhouette edges so let's go here to this plane again let's create a new sketch like this let's rotate this now let's go here let's click on this arrow let's go here to the project 3d silhouette edges like this now we have to select the surface that we wish to project to silhouette edges let's select this surface here like this let's go with okay so this surface has been projected to this plane here and here we have two lines now we can select here a line now we can start here and we can connect those two lines here like this and we can connect those two lines down here like this now let's exit the workbench like this let's go here to the pad and let's go here with 40 like this let's click ok and this is our result here we have a hole so those are some tools that can help you while creating a sketch so you can use a 3d geometry to create a sketch now we're going to show tools scaling and affinity scaling creates the part geometry with reference to the face point or plane for example we can increase and decrease the size of this object so let's go here let's select here scaling here we have to select the reference so we can select a plane or we can select any point or surface so for example let's select this face here this one here and now here we have a ratio and we can increase this ratio so let's go to two now we can see that our height has been increased we can go with three four let's go with okay and now we got this object as you can see let's go back let's go to the scaling again like this 
Now we can select this plane here, this one here, like this. Let's increase the ratio, like this. Look at now. Let's click OK. Now we got this object. As you can see, this is like a ship. Let's go back. Let's go here to the scaling again. And now we're going to select some point. So let's select this point here, this one here. And let's go here with three, like this. And let's click OK. And now the size of this object is three times of the previous size that we had before. So this is how you can increase the size of the object. Now let's go here to the scaling. Let's select here. Let's go zoom. Let's select this point again. This one here, like this. Now here we have a tree. Let's go here with 0.5, like this. Let's click OK. Now we can see that we reduce the size of our object two times. So this is how you can scale your geometry. You only need a reference and that is face, plane or a point. As well, if you click on this arrow, here we have a tool affinity. Let's select this tool. With affinity, we can scale the part geometry along three directions using coordinate values. So here we have to select the origin. For example, we can select here any point. Let's select, for example, this point here. This one here. Now we have to select X, Y plane. Let's select this face here, like this. And now we have to select X axis. So let's select this edge here, like this. And now here we have to enter the ratio for X, Y, and Z directions. So let's go here with three, like this. Let's go here with two. Let's go here with four, like this. Let's click OK. And now we got this result. So you can play with this tool by changing the reference and the scale, and then you can get a different size of your model. Now we're going to show tools thickness, this one here, remove and replace faces. So let's go here with the thickness, this one here. So this is really simple tool with which one you can add a thickness to some face. So let's go here. So here we have a default thickness. So let's go here with 10 millimeters. Here we have default thickness face. Let's select this face here and let's go with OK. And now here we added 10 millimeters of the material. So it's really simple. Let's go back. Let's go to this tool again, thickness. Now we can select here, for example, let's go 15 millimeters. Let's select this face here. Now here we have other thickness faces. Let's click here and let's select this face here. Let's go here with 50 millimeters. Let's click OK. And as you can see here, we added 50 millimeters and here we added 10 millimeters. Now we showed how we can add material with thickness tool. Now we're going to show how we can remove material. So let's go here. Let's select this tool. Now let's select this face. Now we have a warning that this face is already being thickened, but let's go with OK. So now instead of 15 millimeters, we're going to type here minus 50. Let's go with tap. Now let's select here other thickness faces. And now we're going to select this face here. Let's go here with minus 10. Let's go with tap. Like this. And let's click OK. And now we can see that we didn't add a material, but we remove material. So this is also possible by using a tool thickness. Let's go back. Like this. Now here we have another two tools, and this is remove faces and replace faces. So for example, we can go here with remove faces. And now here we can select the faces that we want to remove. For example, we want to remove this fillet here and this fillet here like this. Let's click OK. And now we can see that those fillets are gone. As well, here we have a tool replace faces. So let's select this tool. For example, now we want to replace this face with this face here. So let's show how this works. So first let's select replacing surface, this one here. And now here we have to select the face to remove. Let's select this one here. Let's click OK. And now you can see that this face here becomes this face here. Let's select this tool again. Now, for example, we want to replace this face here with this face here. So let's go here with replacing surface, this one here, and the faces to remove, let's select here. Let's go with OK. 
and now we got this result. So this is how you can use the tools, remove face, replace face and thickness. Now we're going to show how we can measure different properties on our model, for example, distance, angle, area and so on. For that, we're going to use a toolbar measure. Here we have a toolbar measure. If you don't see it, you can right click and you can find here measure toolbar. So the first tool that we have here is measure between. Let's select this one here. So here we have definition. Here we have measure between. We have selection one mode and selection two mode. Here we have any geometry. So we can select any edge, any face, any surface and so on. Here you can change and you can go with specific geometry. For example, only product, only uh, edge, only point and so on. But let's go here with any geometry. You now, for example, we want to measure what is the distance between this face here and this face here. So we can click on this face and this face here. And here we can see the distance 34.4 millimeters. As well, here we can see the minimum distance, the same value. Now, for example, we want to measure what is the angle between this face here and this face here. So let's go here to the measure. Let's select this face and this face here, like this. Now here we don't see any value, but if we go here on the result, here we can see angle 67 degrees. Now if we want to measure the surface area, we can go here and we can select here measure item. Now for example, we want to know what is the surface area of this face here. So let's select here and here we have an area 0.003 meter squared. We can also click on this cylinder and here we can see the area and the radius. And here we have an option, measure the thickness. So let's select this one here. Now we can go here on this cylinder and here we can see what is the thickness. Approximately 17.519 millimeters. Let's go with OK. Here we have the same tool that we shown before. And here we have the last tool. Let's select this one here. Let's select, for example, this face here. And now here we have the characteristics area, mass, surface mass, center of gravity, and so on. Now, for example, let's select this face on the cylinder, like this. As well, here we can see the area, mass, and the surface mass. So this is how you can measure different properties of your feature. Now we're going to show how we can edit our sketches and our features on the specification tree here. So here we have this 3D model. And here we have the specification tree. If we open here part body, we can see that here we have some features, pad one, pad two, pocket, pad, sketch, and so on. As well, we can see that here we have a name, part one. If we wanna change this name, we can right click here and we can go here to the properties. Here we have an option transparency as well. So we can increase the transparency and we can apply it like this. And now we can see the result here. But let's go here to the zero. Let's apply. Let's go here to the mass step. Here we have some general information about our model, density, volume, mass, surface, inertia, and so on. Here we have a product and here we can change the name. So here we have the part number. So let's call it A, like this. Let's apply. We can see the changes here on the tree. Let's click OK. So this is how you can change the name. As well, if you wanna change the name of the part body, you can also right click properties. You can go here to the feature properties tab like this and you can change the name here. We can call it body one like this. Let's apply. Let's click OK. As well, you can change the name of the features and sketches. You can right click on the feature. We can go here properties and you can call it feature one like this. Let's go with apply and OK. As well, you can change the name of the sketch, right click, properties, the same way you can change here the name of the sketch. But let's go with OK here. Now, for example, if you want to change the geometry of the sketch one, you can double click on the sketch one like this. And here we have a sketch one. You know, for example, we want to change this dimension here. So we can double click on this dimension and let's go here with 100 and let's hit enter like this. Let's exit here the workbench and now here we can see the changes. If we open this sketch one, 
we can see that the sketch one consists of axis, geometry, and constraints. So here we have the geometry, line, point, and so on, and here we have constraint, as we can see. If we want to change the property of the feature, we can double click on the feature, like this. And now, for example, for the length, we want to go with 40, and let's hit enter, like this. And we can see the changes here. If you want to delete some feature, you can go here, for example, let's delete this pocket. You can go here, right click, and you can go with delete. Let's go with OK here. And now we don't see this feature. As well, here we have an option that we can hide our model. So we can go to the body one, right click, and you can go with hide show, like this. And now our body is hidden. And now we can see that this icon of the body is transparent because our body is hidden. If we want to show our body, we can right click, and let's go here with hide show like this. As well, if you want to change the properties of some feature, you can go for example to the cylinder and you can double click here. And now you can change the pad properties here. For example, the length, we can go with 20 and let's go with OK. Like this. So this is also the option how you can change the feature properties. So this is how you can edit your sketches and your features.